everybody. Welcome back to the Routine Podcast. Gymnastics Conversations. I'm Chelsea. And I'm Chelsea's mom, Diana. And we're back for episode 79. And we're depressed. (laughs) I know. Can you read what the title of the outline for today's episode says? Oh, it says episode 79, the end of the 2020 NCAA gymnastics season. Sad face. With a little tear. That's how we're all feeling. It's been a humdinger of a week. Yeah, and I don't, you know, when it came time to recording, I said to Chelsea, I, I don't I don't really know what we're going to say. I know. I mean, I think the events of the week pretty much say everything that needs to be said. Yeah, and we talked about, like, should we even do a podcast? Like, again, what should we talk about? But then I said because everything is happening so quickly and things are changing every single day, I think people want to hear what other people are thinking or experiencing and maybe they can relate to the feelings that we have. Sure. I mean, it's a community, right? That's the whole point of our podcast. It was the gymnastics community. So what better time for the community to come together than now? Yeah. I also think if we can find a way to celebrate the season Mm -hmm. even though it's happening you know the end of the season happened much sooner than any of us thought or wanted yeah we have to find a way to celebrate the gymnasts celebrate the teams and especially celebrate the seniors totally maybe in our future episodes now that we don't really have postseason or our nationals mini series to do we can use our platform for another reason now exactly i was even thinking you know you know thinking about this overnight that if we count the number of teams and count the number of seniors maybe there's a celebration of two teams per episode that we talk about the seniors and kind of do a memory lane of you know giving them the the farewell that they deserve yeah But, I mean, that was just in my head. But I think we should think about how we can uh, continue to make sure that we say a proper goodbye to those seniors. I totally agree. Maybe we can detail our feelings of the past seven days, eight days. It was kind of just like this domino effect. It was one team said, oh, like, we're still going to have meets or even athletic events. There's just going to be no people there. And even when that happened there was like a mic drop everybody was shocked how is this gonna turn out no fans at the biggest ncaa event of the entire year exactly how eerie is that gonna feel it was not just basketball but was all ncaa events Mm -hmm. would not have fans and even that was just like holy mackerel that was a shock for us Mm -hmm. and then like you said the week kept continuing and then that thursday Things got even more crazy. And even before we uploaded Thursday's episode, you actually called me and said, should we just have a five-minute segment just explaining COVID-19 and all the changes that are happening? And I was like, you know what? I don't even think we should have that segment because things are probably going to change by the time we upload it tomorrow. Yeah, Not cause, knowing. <laughs> yeah, because it, it was in the midst of craziness. Right. Uh, even if we did do that, right, that you and I did a kind of a five-minute segment, it probably really would have been one minute because we didn't know what was going on. Right. Um, and it would have been old news. It would have. <laughs> and, I, and to be honest, even if we would have done that, I don't think we would have had the emotional – fortitude really to kind of understand the significance of what was happening Mm -hmm. so on thursday the ncaa president sent out another announcement and this one said that all division one men's and women's basketball tournaments as well as all remaining winter and spring championships have been canceled and what's funny is that the ncaa had its own timeline but After our podcast on Thursday was released, we actually had our own timeline with our listeners and the comments that they were leaving us on the episode. So at 11 o'clock a.m., at Gymtertainment said, 
This week's episode of the Routine Podcast was so painful to listen to, knowing that spectators are now banned from all events mentioned. How quickly things change. Yeah, and I just have to say, because Chelsea sends me the tweets throughout the day, because obviously she knows I don't have a Twitter account. And when I read that the episode was painful to listen to, that was painful for me to hear. Because it's like you never want to hear that people listening to you, it's painful. <laughs> painful, yeah. But, but I understood. Yeah. I got it. And then about two hours later... Cole Sarah then left us a comment saying, listening to your latest episode, hearing you discuss the upcoming meets is heartbreakingly sad, now knowing how many meets have been canceled. So we went from no spectators to now it's being canceled. And then finally, at five o'clock, Sam as a dancer said, I had to stop listening in the middle. Still love you guys, but it was too hard. Yeah. So at that point, everything had just been over yeah and i don't know if we had tweets after that but chelsea stopped sending me tweets <laughs> after that which i was thankful for yeah thursday was a hard day it was tough it really was i mean the it's whole all, week it's yeah. all this is all hard i mean you know clearly this country the uh, world the world is in the middle of this incredibly scary pandemic yeah and so we all get the community spread and the significance of that and so intuitively we completely understand the decisions that are being made absolutely but emotionally (laughs) it's hard to grasp yeah like you said as hard as this all is to understand and to really wrap your head around it's what needs to be done for the public's health around the world this is what needs to be done right and we all have loved ones who are you know over the age of 80 some of us are very close to the age of 60 (laughs) you know the pain that i feel in my heart yeah it sucks as a fan we had all of these predictions and goals and expectations for postseason but i'm not even really hurting as a fan right now i'm hurting for the gymnast who will never be able to do gymnastics competitively again. Right. Totally agree. I mean, as a fan, it's like, who cares? It's really the gymnast and the gymnast parents that, you know, you think this was kind of ripped away from them. Yeah. It's one thing to end your career knowing, yeah, knowing that this is my last time doing this. This is my last time going through these doors, going into this locker room, putting on this leotard. My last time doing this routine. Mm -hmm. Right. Doing that in front of fans. Yeah. You have proper closure. But when you don't know that it's your last time, when you don't get the opportunity to value the people around you, the experiences that you're having, it's a completely different thing. Yeah. Which is like when I think about it, like I seriously get the chills because I can't imagine what these gymnasts are going through. Mm -hmm. You know, some of the greatest collegiate gymnasts in of all time, we're never going to be able to watch compete again. Right. Do you don't think they'll do the add the extra year? So the NCAA did say that spring sports, those seniors will be able to be eligible to compete again next season. But they haven't said anything about winter sports. And, you know, I really don't know what's going to happen, but... I think it could get really complicated really fast because at that point you're dealing with scholarship athletes and the freshmen that are coming in. So I I don't know, but just from my guess, I'm guessing they won't. No, I think they will. I'll be honest with you. I think they will. I think this is what I think. I think that the NCAA will figure out a way where these gymnasts have the opportunity to compete again. However, it will be really questionable how many gymnasts take them up on that offer. I think physically. You think they'll allow them the whole season? I do. I do. Even though we were like three quarters of the way there. Yeah, I absolutely think so. The real question will be how many gymnasts will take them up on that. Because physically, emotionally, you just might be done. And plans. I'm sure a lot of these gymnasts have plans to do other things, you know, continue their education elsewhere. Well, a lot of times, too, I know with a lot of the gymnasts that you competed with, they still had schooling left. 
So even though their four years was complete as an athlete, they continued at your school another semester, maybe even two semesters. Yeah. Well, you say the NCAA will have some... They will. Something in their heart. Mm -hmm. I'm saying the NCAA... No, I don't think so. I don't think they have a choice. I really don't. It's just like, you know... What's happening with the virus now and the, they're helping the banking system and they're helping folks who don't have insurance. I mean, your heart is going out to help everybody yeah. and make this as humane as possible. And I know the NCAA, sometimes people know, wonder right? about the humanity, <laughs> but this is the time. Um, I think they will. I just don't think they have a choice. I don't think that they can rip this away from all of the athletes that they have and all of their parents that they have even if they do like a mini tournament in the summertime or something you know i just don't think that they're just going to say oh okay it's gone bye bye i don't think they'll do that interesting i don't know well the thing is like if they decide to grant eligibility to these seniors they're gonna have to like voice this before it's too late you know you can't do it in like august sure you can what i mean what's the hurry at this point by the time it's august people are already back home living with their parents not training well, keep in mind what's going on right now we're just trying to survive the virus yeah that's true we're not trying to plan the future and what's going to happen in the summer and when we're going to do there's time yeah right now we're just trying to survive the pandemic I think that's a good listener question. What do you guys think the NCAA will do? Do you think they're going to grant these seniors that are winter athletes, so it's basketball players, it's gymnasts, it's I think wrestling is a winter sport. Do you think the NCAA is going to allow these seniors to finish up their careers next year? Or do you think the NCAA is going to be like, no, it's too complicated. We just can't do it. Is it that question or should they? Not whether no, I think, I think they everyone will. says, duh, they should. You think so? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm okay with doing that as a listener comment, but I also want to make sure that we do a listener comment again where we celebrate the seniors. Mm -hmm. I think we should have like a whole separate episode. I do, but I would love listener comments of what, what do you want to say to the seniors? What do you want to say to teams? What comments do they want to share with our gymnastics community about what's just happened? This is the time to use that voicemail machine and give us comments about the seniors or, again, the team that you want to celebrate. Even if you don't want to leave a voicemail, you can send us a comment or you can send us a tweet. After everything has kind of played out and we all know what the future is looking like, short term, I guess you could say, that the season is over, it was interesting to see how all of the different teams have then moved forward with this troubling information. So in classic UCLA style, <laughs> they had a dance party, <laughs> which is like so UCLA. So I'm happy to see that they came together and did what they do best, which is dance. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then also Lindenwood had their own little, I guess you could say mock meet where they honored their seniors because athletic departments are not allowing large crowds to congregate, it was just their families in the crowd and they were able to honor their seniors. And it was clear that a lot of other teams across the country wanted to do that for their seniors. So it was nice that they took the time to do that. Yeah, I, I think um, obviously you can hear it in both Chelsea and my voice. Uh, we're still recovering from this, as I know you guys are as well. But I think uh, Florida is a tough one for me to keep thinking about. I know. Uh, I think that's the team that hurts me most. Obviously, there's like individual athletes that I'm hurting for. But thinking about Florida and the momentum they had going into postseason and knowing that that specific team will never happen again because of the seniors that are graduating and the freshmen that are now coming in. It hurts. It stings because you could really see that they were gelling as a team. Yeah. And they were clearly going to be incredibly competitive at nationals. They had a bone to pick and they were going to take care of it at nationals. Yeah. That one's, that one's a tough one. 
And I'm sure they're all feeling it too. That one's a tough one. Maggie Nichols is a really tough one for mm-hmm. me. Kyla. Just, Kyla Kyla's hurts a tough for me. one. I think me for Maggie, it's like, how much? Yeah. Does how much she, more can she Yeah, take? how much does she have to take? Yeah. You know, from injuries on, it's just how much? You know what's interesting? Both Kyla and Maggie ended with 10 O's on vault on their last competition. And they both ended tied with the 10 0 record that they they were chasing. Yeah. See, but then that's the other thing. If they grant these seniors another year, then is it fair that they break the 10 0 record because they have a whole nother year? Well, I just don't, at that point, you put, you, if they break the record, you just put an asterisk after it. It's just, you're not worried about the record at that point. You just want to make sure that they get the opportunity to close out a year close out nationals and do it their normal way versus not doing it at all we'll see what the ncaa has to say i'm sure there's going to be a lot of asterisks with whatever they put together that's right i mean it's already an asterisk yeah can we say some of the positive tweets that we got i think we should (laughs) my goodness i think we should Well, of course, we've got a couple more tweets on Dirty Dancing. So we, well, I think Jesse's heard enough of Dirty Dancing. <laughs> but someone did say that they also have not watched Dirty Dancing. So they're going to hide in the same corner with me. Well, and they didn't really <laughs> care about watching it either like you. So I think Thank that's you just for the validation. Um, we also got a tweet from Hattie. You remember Hattie. She left us a voicemail. And she uh, wrote, Listening to the routine podcast on my walk to work made me laugh out loud several times. I love listening to you ladies, Chelsea and Diana. You are so entertaining and I love your banter back and forth. Congrats on an amazing podcast. Not just this episode, but every episode. Thank you, Hattie. Thank you, Hattie. And she put some hearts in there for us, too. (laughs) That was a good comment to read after this week. Um, We needed it. Yeah, we did. We did. So we actually have one more positive comment. Good. We need positivity. And it's actually a voicemail from Ida. We got a voicemail. We got a voicemail. Hi, Chelsea and Diana. This is Ida from Norway. I just want to say well done on your last week's episode. It is so sad about all the corona stuff going on. I got so sad when I saw the last news. Every single senior has to end their own career so much earlier than they thought. It is the same thing here in Norway. Schools and other shops are closed. But then I just get more time to listen to you guys' episodes. Bye! Or as we say in Norway, Hada! Hada! It's kind of like holla, right? I know, right? Holla back at you! Holla! Hada! Hada, Ida! Hi, Ida. <laughs> no, it's hello, not goodbye. We're telling her hello. Right? No, hot is bye. Holla back at you. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Ida. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so thank you, Ida. It's so interesting to hear from another perspective about how they're dealing with the coronavirus. It's true. But it sounds like globally, we're all just kind of... Doing the best we can. Yeah, trucking through it. Listening to the routine podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should go back and listen to... Uh, actually, no. It will hurt. It will hurt me. Wait, listen to like old episodes? Yes. Well, reading Hattie's comment actually made me want to go back and listen to last week's episode because she said that she couldn't stop laughing. And I'm like, <laughs> what is she laughing about? Because I don't think we meant to be funny. <laughs> I, I don't even remember what we said. Me neither. In this episode, less mine last week's episode. <laughs> I know. So I may listen to last week's episode again. Maybe, okay, this is, you know, because we're still trying to figure out what we're going to do over the next several months. I think we should do like a back in time routine podcast where you and I like, like listen to a podcast and then... I don't know. Do something with it? I don't know. We share our notes, our behind the scenes info <laughs> about what really happened when we stayed the night in a motel yeah. at LSU. <laughs> yeah, something, right? <laughs> How I saw critters crawling on the floor and the ceiling on our bed. <laughs> yeah, that kind of stuff. <laughs> that could be interesting, but we have to agree on an episode. 
Yeah. We have a lot of a lot of hidden gems. We do. Maybe that's what we do because I'm guessing you probably still have all the outtakes on all this stuff. Oh gosh, do I? <laughs> I have a hard drive full of audio files. <laughs> maybe that's what we do. But you know, we couldn't do that for two months. Like maybe every other week. Maybe or it could something. be like a new segment. No. A set of news you can use since you love that so much. <laughs> Bloopers you can use. Yeah. That actually would be like a nice lighthearted yeah. little segment that everyone can use nowadays. Yeah, maybe. Let's think about it. Yeah, let's think about that carefully. And I get to listen to whatever you edit. <laughs> I know, because it's going to be all mom bloopers and no <laughs> Chelsea bloopers. <laughs> it's going to be these parts where I say, and such and such scored a Dutch a Dutch and Chelsea goes no mom that's mm-hmm. not her name and she's from Minnesota it's like no mom no, she mom. actually goes it's to not- Florida <laughs> <laughs> and she did a backflip no, no mom. mom that's a back handspring <laughs> <laughs> that's a back tuck I won't embarrass you all right so let, let's think about it okay thank you Ida thank you Ora. Ora. no no hala oh it is hara 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 Look at us. We're learning new languages on the routine podcast. I think that's what we should say when we say goodbye from now on. Hada. Hada. So I guess the thing is, the whole coronavirus kind of threw a wrench in our flow for the podcast. You Didn't know? it? We even had an interview that was going, going to be in this episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jenna from College Gym News gave us an amazing interview yeah. on RQS and how it works. Mm-hmm. Jenna is a mathematician. So understanding RQS and, and layman's terms able to explain it was uh, what she provided for us in the interview. And of course, we can't air it. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe next year we can air yeah, it. Yeah, I'm sure it will come in handy later on, but... You know, right now probably isn't the right time for it. No, but thank you, Jenna, so much Mm -hmm. for talking to us that evening. I think we should also do one of my favorite episodes, and I think it's one of our listeners' favorite episodes that we do every year, which is fan favorites. Um, I think we all need a little bit of time to just kind of let the dust settle before we do this episode, but I think we should definitely do that episode in the future. I, I do too, but not yet. No, not yet. Does that mean also, Chelsea, that Tim Michaels and the NAIGC, that that season had to end as well? Yep. Everything is over. Wow. See, that's the issue, the magnitude of this. I mean, we can be in our gymnastics bubble and just, you know, obviously feel really sorry for all of us and everybody in the gymnastics community, but it went broad. I mean, it was basketball, wrestling, You know, I even think about the Olympics. Think about Mm -hmm. the Olympians who've been training for this once every four years. That's not officially called off yet. It's not, but but even if it's not, understand the impact of training um, in Tokyo, building all the facilities that need to be built, and being ready for that. This is a, a a huge impact. I mean, literally, it's a hopefully once in a lifetime event. perfect time for us to hear from you all what do you guys want to hear now that we can't cover current gymnastics news because there is no current gymnastics happening what do you guys want to hear from us yeah give us give us your thoughts who do you want us to talk to we have a couple of ideas of people we would like to speak with but i think it would be helpful to hear what you all want to hear Oh, and I think also, Chelsea, you were sharing with me about the our tickets that we had for nationals and what we should do about those tickets. Yeah, so someone on Twitter, I know I keep saying this, but actually a couple of people suggested, and again, this is all up to you all. For those of you who did purchase tickets to nationals, obviously everything is being refunded, um, but a couple of people have suggested to donate part of the money that you got back for 
your tickets, if not the whole thing, to CGGI, which is the Collegiate Gymnastics Growth Initiative. That money can help increase the number of collegiate gymnastics teams in the United States. I think that's great. Yeah, so if you all want to donate, the website is wcgagym.com. So I think that that kind of wraps up this episode, Jess, huh? Yeah. Hopefully it wasn't too depressing, but also hopefully in sharing our thoughts and emotions on the situation, you all are able to relate to. So we look forward to hearing your various uh, suggestions about what we should have in our upcoming episodes. But also, if there are seniors that you want to make sure we celebrate, uh, make sure you leave us a comment about who those seniors would be. Yeah, and you can leave us a comment um, on our Twitter. Our Twitter is at Routine Podcast. You can also email us at info at theroutinepodcast.com. Or you can leave us a voicemail on our website, theroutinepodcast.com. And you do that by going to the episode in which you're interested in leaving a comment about. You'll see a little button that says voicemail. Click that button. You'll see a microphone. Click the microphone and you leave us a voicemail. And if you like today's episode or any of our episodes this season, be sure to give us five stars on the Apple Podcast app. It really helps us out. And we hope you all enjoy your self-quarantine Hope you're not too bored. (laughs) This is is the time to binge on the routine podcast. Right. And leave us a voicemail in your quiet little self-quarantine area. And you could go back and re-look at Nationals episodes from the past, right? That's true. That's true. Witness the final four with us again. Yeah. I actually would highly suggest that because we've had some good times at Nationals. Yeah. Just kind of relive it. Yeah. That's what they're doing on a lot of the channels. They're... Reshowing the tennis championship from last year, reshowing the basketball highlights from last year. So, you know, just kind of redo the whole season, play us, watch some gymnastics, and make it to the Final Four. Mm-hmm. And most importantly, stay safe. Absolutely. Stay, stay safe. Healthy. And, and uh, here's to your family mm-hmm. uh, and making sure that everybody stays healthy. And we'll talk to you next week. Bye. Goodbye.